Previously, we visited the idea that reactions can be spontaneous if there's a movement towards greater randomness, that is, a positive change in entropy, and if it releases energy, that is, a negative change in enthalpy. The reaction proceeds as it is until all the reactants have been used up to form the products. But what if these drivers oppose each other? Like, what if there's a positive change in entropy, but also a positive change in enthalpy? Why does it have to get difficult? Gibbs free energy allows us to determine spontaneity. This is the measure of the net result of the energy and the energy drives of the reaction. It's calculated using this, with T is Kelvin all in their standard states. If delta G is negative, then the reaction will occur spontaneously. If delta G is positive, then it will not occur spontaneously. Take a look at this example. Is the complete combustion of octane spontaneous at 298 Kelvin? Here's a chemical formula. Delta H can be calculated using the sum of enthalpy formation of products minus reactants. So these are the values. Noticing oxygen is zero because it's already in its standard state. This gives negative 16043 kilojoules per mole. Now delta S is the sum of entropy change of products minus reactants. So here those are. And the answer is negative 1163 joules per mole. But we gotta to convert to kilojoules so it's consistent. Now delta G is the delta H minus TAS which is negative 15696.43 kilojoules per mole. Let's assume that those calculations are correct because that was a lot of writing. However, the negative Gibbs value indicates a spontaneous reaction regardless if there was a small input of energy to kickstart the reaction. A large value also means it's going to occur in the direction written. A value close to zero would indicate that the reactants could form products, but at the same time, products could react to form the reactants. Therefore, there could be two reactions occurring at the same time. These are known as reversible reactions. It's possible to predict if a reaction is reversible, but I'll do that in another video.